October 26, 2022. Uh, we're going to start the meeting with the approval of the minutes of the last meeting, September 28. Hope everyone had a chance to review them. I had comments, but I sent them into Vanessa earlier. So <laughs> I think we've got it right now. I think they were made, yes. Right, thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank, thank you, Mike. Second. Thank you, Denise. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our uh, next uh, agenda item, the service award recognition. Right. Uh, one little note, so I always affectionately called Dave Stackrow Eagle Eye because he would he just catches stuff. And it's great to have someone who catches stuff, but I think we now have Eagle Eye 2. <laughs> well uh, he, he catches things that only, uh, only Stackrow could catch certain things. I guess say now only La Hutt can catch certain things. Dave, you can get off the board now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. Sometimes I might not show it, but I do appreciate it. So we have two today, right? Yes, and we're going to stick with the format that we kind of stumbled into. Uh, Nelson, come on up. Uh, she got mad at me when I called him Nelly. Where does he move? You know, just this way in front of the screen. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. New two. Well, yeah, it has new two. Well, it's actually <laughs> old. Someone remember. Hey, we have a screen. What is it? Yeah, let's use it. Well, to start things off today, um, Nelson Cole, who is one of our maintenance support technicians, and he's celebrating 20 years of service with CBTA. So Nelson came to us after working in commercial office cleaning. His friend, Willie Johnson, was working here, and he suggested that he apply. So Nelson began his career, his career at CBTA as a service technician in 2002. So service techs help fuel and clean the buses when they come off the road, and they also help with facility maintenance and assist with CDTA operations. So after six years as a service tech, Nelson worked his way to a support technician, and support techs spend more time on the technical side of things and support our diesel mechanics. So one of Nelson's favorite parts of the job, he said, is being on second shift. He says he, that he's a night owl and that he loves the crew that he works with. He also says there are less distractions and that he can get through his work more efficiently on the second shift. So one of his favorite memories, he said, is with his co-worker, Vinny. He tells us that they cleaned up an old grill, and every other week in the summer, they have a cookout during breaks. He said that the job security adds to the experience of working for CDTA, and Nelson really likes that, and living within walking distance is a perk on nice days in the summer. So in his spare time, he gets to hang out with his four grandbabies who are 11, 4, 2, and 1. He loves to travel, and he said he just got back from a trip to San Diego to see his brother in March, and that he will be going on his dream trip to Hawaii very shortly. Yeah. Um, he tells us retirement is still close to 10 years away, so that's a good thing for us, but congratulations, Nelson, on 20 years. from New York City. He is a mechanic by trade and was working in Queens when he paid a visit to the Capital Region with some friends. During his visit, he saw a CDTA bus on the road and he thought to himself, would I rather fix it or drive it? <laughs> so you can probably tell how the story ends. He said that he would like to drive it and that's what he's been doing for the last 20 years. So like all of our 20 year employees, when they started with CDTA, they started in STAR as part time and after six months, he moved up to full time. He said that he didn't like driving in Troy with the hills, so when there was an opening in Schenectady, he decided to go for it. And that's where Denny has been ever since. He began driving the Route 55 between Schenectady and Albany. He knows all of the routes in Schenectady and now drives the Route 905, which is our BRT red line. His favorite part of the job is meeting all kinds of people on the road and at work. Some of his favorite memories, he tells us, comes, come from the road when he noticed his regulars waiting to take his bus after work. 
He said that they stay late at work or just enjoy the fresh air to make sure that Denny can drive them home. <laughs> and another fond memory is the Schenectady Division hosting their holiday party each year. He says that he enjoys spending time with his colleagues during the holidays and celebrating all of the holidays together. In his spare time, Denny can be found fixing up his house and also fixing up cars and traveling. He says he likes to frequent New York City, Toronto, and Florida. He also tells us that retirement is not for at least another 10 years, so we're glad that you're sticking around, and congratulations on 20 years. So two more, right? Two more. Um, you probably think I'm a broken record on this thing, but I don't know. I think we did a certain number of years. These are just two good guys. Um, if I had to describe both of them. You know, and I know both of them well, um, and I see both of them, and, you know, you, you can talk about anything with these guys. You can talk about CDK. You can talk about what's the weather. You can talk about what's going on. Uh, they're just engaging people. Uh, they're the kind of people you'd have over your house for dinner. Um, and you know, maybe Nellie will have us over for a cookout. <laughs> just, just good, good, solid people. And that's really what this company, you know, survives on. You know, without, without guys like Denny and Nellie, you know, we don't do what we do. Appreciate that, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll move into committee reports, and I'll kick it off with the board operations committee meeting. Uh, that uh, convened on October 17th. Uh, we reviewed the committee agendas and activities for all our meetings this month, including today. Uh, Carm provided us with an update on headcounts uh, within the company. There's a class of 17 training set to be released, begin work in the next week or so. Another class of 12 people started training last week. Uh, as you know, there's a high level of effort and attention about recruitment and training taking place right now, which is needed to keep our staffing at optimal levels for the foreseeable future. Hiring and retention is becoming the mainstay of our monthly board operation committee. Uh, we also talked about the budget development now that we're at the midpoint of the fiscal year. An informal group of the board will start taking a look at next year's budget uh, sometime in the near future. And we also discuss our uh, board a retreat that's taking place on November 17th at the E-Tech building on the U Albany Harriman campus. Uh, we will discuss uh, service area expansion, service opportunities. We'll take a deep dive into issues about our facilities, uh, charging infrastructure, zero emission vehicles. Uh, there'll be more details coming up on that, but I think the date is pretty much set with everyone. And the uh, next meeting of the board operations committee is set for December 7th, Wednesday, December 7th. Okay, a little infamy card. Yes, and, yeah, we'll uh, always have one. And uh, uh, 915 here at 110 uh, Washington Avenue as well as Microsoft Teams. Any questions about my report? If not, we'll move on to the Performance uh, Monitoring Committee. Denise Figueroa. Okay, yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jamie, and thank you for chairing the, uh, the committee meeting no this week. Um, we have six agenda items, uh, contracts to be voted on, so I will start with approval of the contract for printing services. Our contract to print bus schedules is about to expire, and an invitation for bids was issued. Uh, three bids were received, and staff recommends a contract to the low bidder, Digital Express. Uh, they are the incumbent and a certified New York State WBE firm. Um, so we need a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional renewals, uh, renewal years to Digital Express of Albany for an amount not to exceed $450,000. Can I get a motion for the contract on printing? Motion. Dan, second. Peter, any questions, comments? Have a discussion with the committee about training yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Anybody yeah. just meeting as well? Yeah. Okay. There's no questions, then uh, we'll move it. Uh, all those in favor of uh, Resolution 41 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. 
Okay, our next uh, contract is for Market Research Services. Um, our contract for Market Research Services is also about to expire, and a new contract is required. An RFP was issued for research services to include customer surveys, stakeholder engagement, and workforce assessments. Uh, three proposals were received, and staff recommends a contract to TransPro Consulting. Uh, we need a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional renewal years to TransPro Consulting in Spring Hill, Florida, for an amount not to exceed $500,000. I think I'm not sure this. So moved. Thank you, Penny. Second? Okay. Thank you, Jackie. These are the new guys, right? Yes. Yeah. New, new guys, but really not, not real new. Uh, it's actually two or three things that kind of come together here. Uh, our longtime partner in market research, Fact Finders, um, the firm is basically slowly retiring. Uh, they've been downsizing for several years, and they're just not, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word capable or, or interested, but they're basically downsizing right before our eyes. Um, so they, they're no longer really in this business. This firm uh, is headed by Mark Ash, who, who I think most of you remember. Uh, and we're doing uh, a bit of work with Mark. Uh, we're involved with uh, TransDash right now. Uh, that's actually, we're going we're gonna to show that to the board shortly. Uh, that's a, a nationwide dashboard. Um, so we've been doing work. We tested Mark's firm. Um, and they've done a couple of smaller research projects with us. And we've been very, uh, very pleased with their services. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is there's not a lot of firms that do this. There's certainly not a lot of firms that can bring transit experience to this. So I think we're in a really good position here, and <coughs> their proposal was extremely good and extremely competitive. It stands on its own merit. Any comments? Any questions for Carr? All those in favor of retaining transfer say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Okay, our next contract is for snow removal services. Um, <coughs> although the weather outside would not indicate that there would be snow. Never too early to start talking the about snow. Um, we need a contract for snow removal at the Rensselaer Rail uh, Station. Uh, an invitation for bids was issued and two bids were received. Staff recommends a contract to the low bidder, Snow Systems Nationwide. Uh, they have a local <coughs> office in Mechanicville. Um, we need a motion to award a three year contract with two optional years to Snow Systems Nationwide of Cicero, Illinois for an estimated amount of $639,000. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Second. Second. Thank you, Mike. This is at, just at the Rensselaer Rail Station, yes. correct? the Rail Station, yes. Just a note, the files are not deployed from Cicero, Illinois. Uh, there's a local a local company, uh, Mechanic for Mileage from Cicero. Yeah, yeah the mileage from Cicero would be... Uh, it's a little bit of a pitch. Yeah, it's almost impossible to get snow removal done. As Dan had informed us in the city, it's just yeah. crazy. Even your own driveway. I was just going to say, your own driveway. <laughs> Is this a new firm from what's been yeah. done in the past? Yeah. Okay, so we haven't worked with them before. But Jeremy and his gang have talked to the, pe the local people. Yep. Should be okay. All right. Fingers crossed. It won't snow, so we'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? All those in favor of the snow plowing contract say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Okay, now we have several insurance uh, contracts to award. The first, I know there was a lot of discussion at, at the committee meeting. Um, yeah. So the first is approval of the contract for workers' compensation excess insurance. Uh, workers' compensation excess insurance provides protection against large claims for employee injury occurring on the job that exceeds $1 million. We are self-insured for the first $1 million. We received three proposals, and staff recommends to the low-cost proposer, Ace American Chubb, our incumbent. We had a good discussion about the program structure, how it works, and pricing for this insurance. That was more than you wanted. Sure right? is. <laughs> we need a motion to award a one-year contract to Ace American Chubb of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for $372,724, which is effective on November 10th of 2022. So moved. Second. 
Yeah. Anybody have any questions or comments about insurance? I How much I, more can we say, Joe? I think I bored everybody to <laughs> tears. <so. laughs> we can end the discussion right there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, then all those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Approved. Okay, next one is approval of the contract for auto general liability insurance. Um, our auto and general liability insurance provides protection against claims for injury and damage to people and property caused by our operation. We are self-insured for the first $2 million with excess insurance coverage layered at $8 million and $5 million for a total of $13 million. Uh, we received one proposal for each layer for a cost uh, total cost increase of 11% from the previous year. We need a motion to award an $8 million excess policy to American Alternative Insurance Company of Princeton, New Jersey, a $5 million excess policy to Allied World, uh, World Assurance Company of New York City, and a non-certified acts of terrorism policy to Lloyd's of London for, uh, yeah, of New York City. The total premium cost is $572,658, and that will be effective November 10th, 2022. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Denise. Second. Thank you. Jackie, a basket of insurance coverage here for us. Any questions? Again, I'm upset. Well, well. All joking aside, I'm glad the committee engages in those kinds of discussions, right? Because we, if we air it out, it could yeah. be bad and the ugly. Um, and that's really the, the way that this, our governance process is designed to work. You know, we'll hammer it out, we'll get into minutiae if we have to, and then when we get to the board meeting, I think you'll know, rest assured that you know, maybe, maybe we overdid it, but we certainly hammered out you know, what our insurances are and, and how they're structured. It's not straightforward. We're, we're, a, we're a tough race. You know, so we can't give any of these programs. We don't yeah. get anyone to take on all the risk. We'll take on some of the risk. If you want us to take on more of the risk, you're going to pay for it. So. Very good understanding of our policy. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a waiter. Everything is waiter. This next one was the one that came in at the last minute. Um, thank you very much for being patient with it. We're still not 100% sure why... This was so difficult or took so long, but rather, you know, I talked to Denise this morning, rather than talk about it in November, this is the type of thing maybe we talk about in May, and there is no pressure um, to, to put a policy in place. So we'll revisit this maybe in six months. Yeah. Okay. Well, on Resolution 45, any, uh, any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Approved. One more. Okay, one more. Um, the last one is approval of the contract, again, for auto <coughs> damage insurance. <coughs> but this is for, uh, in the event of fire, theft, and collision. The insurance cost is based on the value of our fleet. We purchased a total of $30 million in coverage every year, um, and uh, enough to protect a total loss of our vehicles at one of our facilities. Uh, we received one proposal from our incumbent carrier, Lexington Insurance, for $15 million, leaving a gap of $15 million toward our total coverage amount. As discussed at the committee, there was a delay in receiving the second $15 million coverage proposal, but we did receive the proposal on Monday. Um, Burlington Insurance will provide a $5 million excess policy, and Homeland Insurance will provide a $10 million policy to give us a total of $30 million in coverage. Hiscox and CFC underwriting of Lloyd's of London will provide terrorism coverage for the second $15 million layer. So we need a motion to award a one-year contract to the following insurance companies effective uh, November 10th, 2022. First is Lexington Insurance of Boston, Massachusetts for $296,817. Burlington Insurance Company of Alpharetta, Georgia for $26,192. Uh, Homeland Insurance of Plymouth, Minnesota for $281,383. And Hiscox CFC and Underwriting of uh, Atlanta, Georgia for $31,021. Okay, we'll get a motion on that. So moved. Thank you, Denise. Second? Second. Joe? <coughs> 
Why don't we only do this once again? <laughs> yes, Dan. That's a question from the, uh, the third company. I'm just looking at the memorandum here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, numbers. The numbers. That's not right. The total. <coughs> we, we went yes. back and forth on notes. Yeah. Uh, the total premium, let's ignore the individual cost. The total premium cost is $416,292. That will match the resolution. I'll, we'll send you a note back into the individual cost. That you would be right. Is that a combination um, when put together so resemble what we had when we had 30? Yeah, it does. It, 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 at the end of the day, we'll have the same coverage, but it'll be from four different companies. Okay. I would imagine legal will have a ball if something ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing's going to happen. It's not going to snow. So I think what the board resolution will say is $416,292. I think that's what the board resolution says. Well, we can't just go down to the corner. All state agent and buy this insurance. It's, a, it's hard, hard to obtain. Yeah. So, it's necessary. I saw that one. Sorry. Doesn't yeah. help when yeah. literally things are coming <laughs> in after midnight. Yeah. My email had the right one. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I tried to get you quick. Yeah. You're, you had three different meetings. Yeah. We're all set? I think so. Am I understanding that a, they uh, proposed a decrease to the Lexington? On the on the first layer, <laughs> yeah. But the other layers were actually. At the end of the day, we're going to pay more. How much more? Ja Jack, do you know how much more? Like one hundred and thirty thousand. A lot. What's that? Uh, <coughs> a lot. All of our insurances went up this year. Um, for the last few years, we were relatively flat, uh, but everything went up this year, just like everything else. I mean, the insurance. Insurance companies are telling us the same thing. Everyone's done as well. Our costs went up. They're pointing to hurricanes, and tornadoes, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And your and your experience rating has nothing to do with the. I mean, you know. Well, our experience thing. rating is good, right? <laughs> right I know. Uh, it's on, point. On, on some of these, the value of the fleet yeah. has gone it's up. Because remember, we, we we double loaded on. You know, we didn't buy 15 buses. We actually bought more than 30 buses, so that increased the value for the yeah. total value of the fleet. So mm -hmm. they, they insure us based on the total value of that fleet, if they had to replace it. Yeah. Right. Okay. If, if there was something that happened here, everything was wiped out, what would it cost to replace it? So it's good news that we have a newer fleet. It's bad news that when you go to insure it, you have to pay more. Think of having you know six new cars in your driveway as opposed to six used cars. This gets very confusing. Especially when I start playing staff guy at 10 30, maybe until the numbers are right. Anything else? Should break the mic for me. All those in favor of the insurance back to say aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We're good. We're good to go. It's only okay. Um, Next, we have our administrative discussion items. Uh, Mike Collins gave the monthly management uh, report. The MRT continues uh, to be strong at 35% over budget for the year. The customer fares are 16% over budget, and the rental rail station uh, is 37% over budget. Our wages were under budget by 6% uh, due to continuing issues with recruitment and retention. Um, but we are in very good financial position at this point. Um, almost six months in, right? Five months in. Um, any questions on that? Okay, and then on the monthly non-financial report, Chris Desany provided that uh, report. Uh, the fixed route ridership continues to grow and is up 14% for the month and 19% for the year. Star ridership is up 10% for the month and 16% for the year. Uh, fixed route on-time performance was at 69%, and star on-time performance was at 72%. I'm assuming some of that stuff is related to the personnel issues and not getting the buses out. The 69 is, and yeah. we're not happy yeah, about right. it, and, and I think you'll call from the performance meeting, Chris, Chris indicated that we are pulling those numbers apart. Well, 
Well, the issue is not necessarily the 69%, but the fact that for the last six months, it's yeah. been on a slow creep down. Um, and, you know, frankly, the bus only system 69%, pretty average, but average is not good enough. Yeah. So you know, we've got to make sure we know why that is. Uh, the missed trips continue to be high due to headcount issues. And there were 11 preventable accidents and 23 non-preventable accidents. And our absenteeism report shows that 10% of work days are not worked. It's too high. Yeah. So the next meeting uh, is scheduled for December 14th at 110 Waterloo Eighth Avenue and on Microsoft Teams. Thank, Thank you, Jamie. Jamie. Hey, just, we just wanted, <laughs> I just wanted to thank the members of the committee for hanging in with us. Uh, insurance stuff was, was, we're not still sure why everything was late, why everyone kept you know, their hands so close to their chest on this. You know, John Murray, you know, has been our partner for years and years, so we trust John. But it just it just got a little kooky. I mean, literally, Mike and I were exchanging calls at 10.30 this morning. Still, you know, the numbers still didn't quite add up. So if, if we're off by one or two, you know, we'll come back and tell you why. So thanks for hanging in there with us. It's, just, it's an odd year. Um, but, you know, Georgia, you're right. We'll be, it's about $1.2 million in insurance that you that you approved, and uh, that's up significantly. Uh, but I'm, you know, think of it: a $115 million budget. I think $1.2 million to ensure what we are and what we do. Probably reasonable. We should probably pay attention to the trends. You know, is that yeah. what, for purposes of planning, I think it's important yep. to really keep our eye on that. Yeah, agreed. And trust, you know, our experts are giving us the best advice and doing the best they can. And it's tough to. But boy, the classic line now, you know, everything is going up. It's true, every, everywhere we turn. You know, we're, the yeah, the meetings are going on today, and everyone throughout the state is seeing the same kinds of increases. Yeah, good excuses any, right? But you, but you have no choice. I know. And you, as someone said, you can't open a phone book and find people to insure places like this. Mm -hmm. you know, I'd love to call Mike yeah. Rochelle, but yeah. I, don't think, I don't think he would touch us. I'll take your call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you could add value. So thank you. Yeah. And even the length of the meetings is going up today. It's yeah, more than I an know. hour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. I think more than an hour is usually wasted. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the next committee report. Committee that to uh, Never runs more than an hour. Go ahead, Jackie. Uh, the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on Thursday, October 20th at 11.15 here at uh, 110 Waterloo Week on Microsoft Teams. Staff provided updates on three items. The first was on advocacy. Um, not much to report, but Carm discussed the start of ad advocacy season and the development of messaging at the state and local levels. The second item uh, was our new, but going to be a regular agenda item, um, quarterly social media activity and strategy report. John Scherzer outlined that report. Um, key metrics that are being used to track the company's social media growth are audience, brand awareness, and engagement rates. Over the last quarter, Facebook and Instagram have seen the biggest increase in followers, with Instagram gaining nearly 2,000 followers in just the last month. Success and engagement is attributed to a more interactive content and ad campaign. Engagement rates have increased 3 to 5% above business account industry standard. Looking ahead, social media content and strategy will focus on recruitment, our car share program, Drive, the wrap-up of the CDPHP cycle season, and more emphasis on video and interactive content. The third and final item uh, is Jamie Caslow's uh, regular uh, agenda item every month, the Media Relations and Community Engagement Report. CDTA earned 10 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio throughout the last month. Stories focused on the 20th anniversary of the Rensselaer Rail Station and the CDT, wow, CDTA pink bus is hitting the streets for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Some of our community engagement activities have included the Capital Region Chamber DEI Summit, the Black Nurses Coalition Breast Cancer Walk, and the Patriot Flight Transportation for Veterans. Uh, anyone have any questions? No? 
Okay. Our next meeting of the committee is scheduled for Thursday, December 15th at 11.15 a.m. here at 110 Waterloo in uh, Microsoft. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, we'll move on to our next committee report, Strategic and Operational Planning, Mike Sharp. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee met last Thursday, October 20th, 12 p.m. here at 110 <laughs> Waterloo Dash and via Microsoft Teams. We had one administrative discussion item, which was the Washington Western uh, BRT Gardenway. Uh, Jeremy Smith gave an update on the Gardenway busway we are constructing on the University at Albany campus. The Gardenway consists of one mile of gated, semi-dedicated bus lane directed between the science library and the track. Through a close partnership with the university, we're building a new road and forest multi-use path, relocating utilities and taking significant stormwater mitigation measures. There will be a new station located directly adjacent to the campus center, a vast campus green, new decorative security LED lighting, signage, and landscaping enhancements. The project is valued at $10 million, and the contractor is New Castle Paving. It is set to be complete next construction season. Jeremy provided photos illustrating the progress of the work and discussed the connections between this location, ETEC, and the Brevator uh, Washington Western BRT stops. The project is on time and on budget, which is commendable based upon supply chain issues and inflationary trends. Uh, the next meeting of the committee will be December 15th, 12 p.m. here at 110 Board of Elite Athens via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report, unless there's any other comments or questions. Hey, just a comment, you know, um, another sort of broken record theme of mine, you know, these BRT projects are really, you know, investments in the community, they can be called public works projects. This is a classic example of what we're doing over at the Albany campus. And when we have our retreat at, at the ETEC building, you'll see the connection to Harriman. Literally right out the window is the connection between the Harriman uh, Gardenway, the busway, and, and the Gardenway uh, at U Albany. And if you're on the campus, you go to a football game or something. Actually, you go to a football game, you're sitting up high at Casey Stadium, you can see um, getting used to Gardenway, the Gardenway. Um, but you know, considerable investment that we're making at the university in, in return. Shuttle service involved for the bus line. Well, we have we have several routes that run in and out of the university, um, and remember, they're one of our larger universal access partners. So all students, faculty, and staff have access to those. But now, the BRT and any route that we choose um, will have the ability to run along the Gardenway into Harriman, Harriman and out to Brevard. It's going to shorten a timeline, shorten a trip by significant. This is a big development. Remember, we're yeah. also looking at the um, you know, parts of the region where we could you know, support a, a busway or some sort of shared right away. You know, so far, you know, this is an old region. The geography doesn't doesn't bode well for busways. This does, so we'll use this as our example moving forward and the example of a partnership. And you know, we talk about that word all the time. This is a clear example of partnership. Literally, are building this from scratch you know, with the university's full engagement and, and cooperation. And for those of you that have worked with entities like that, you know, Dan, Dan has, Pete, I know Peter has. It's tough sometimes to get a partnership with the university to this level. So they see the value. I even remember the, uh, uh, the, the, the hard line stands about just breaking into the right road. Or hard line about taking down some trees. Oh yeah, which is kind of interesting considering that when the campus was built that the trees were planted up a significant number of trees that would reach the end of life. To your point about a public works project, trees had to come down 40% or some percentage that were ready to go anyway. So it's a much bigger project. It's great. It's a very interesting group. 
We'll move on to the uh, CEO report, Carl. Yeah, well, thank you. you. You've covered a lot of it, but we're going to do something a little different. Um, we talk about community relations, customer relations. We've talked a lot about you know, the work we did in, in Montgomery County and how we're engaging the community. Well, we were um, surprised, and some of you were there uh, in Seattle, uh, to be highlighted for our work in Montgomery County. Um, the opening of the annual meeting, um, one of I mean, vignettes with several customers talking about how transit changed their lives. Um, you know, Dave texted me and said, gee, it would be nice to know. And we didn't know, number one. But you know, he said, yeah, it's a real engaging story. I'd like to meet the person. Well, we found out later these are actors. But, but still, still, <laughs> I, I really thought, that. listen. You know, staff girl's texting is just a lot of What are you doing? We're being great to have arranged a meeting. Yeah, right. yeah. But, 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 but I, thought, I thought you'd like to see it, and we've queued this up so that we're at the tail end of um, Paul Scatellis' comments that sort of open this up, and, and then we'll give you a glimpse into what everyone saw. So oh, I'll take a few minutes, if we can get the technology to work. <clears throat> We must now not become complacent about our successes. Public transportation's popularity is reassuring, but we know we face many challenges. One is recovering ridership. We've reached a new level, 70% of pre-pandemic levels nationally, and that is greatly encouraging. We know we're not where we need to be, but we're making progress. Another is worker shortages which continue to cause reductions in service. This is why we must demonstrate how the new and expanded investments in public transportation are changing lives. As you heard in the opening video, our best messengers are the people whose lives we are making better every single day. And it's not just riders. It's the company executive who can recruit skilled workers from a nearby town. It's the mayor who is able to attract new business investment. It's the bus manufacturer who's adding jobs to meet increasing orders. It's the shop owner and restaurateur who are easily accessible to new customers. We need to publicize their stories. This morning, I want to share three such stories with you. First, let's hear how public transit isn't just for getting to and from work. Someone wants Happiness is having a large, loving, caring, close-knit family in another city. These are my two girls, Tasha and Tanika. They live in another city, almost a county away. And I miss them terribly. The most important thing in the world to me is family. I didn't need the pandemic to teach me that, but it did make me value my visits with them even more. My daughters, they lived in another part of the county. And for years, there has been no public transportation to connect us. When the neighborhood changed and most of the daily commuters relocated to a different bus route, transit disappeared. I'm on a fixed income. I nor my daughters want the expense of a car. So the options to travel to see my daughters were limited and costly. I was left with no choice but to accept the reality that our visits would never be as frequent as I would want. But then, six months ago, the Capital District Transportation Authority started affordable, convenient, regular transit service in my county. Now I can see Tasha and Tanika as often as I want. Public transit gave me my family back. So it's a little heavy. Uh, most of it is true. Um, for example, this person who submitted the story is, is, is 
is male, not female. Uh, and I think after in the script, may Jamie and I just exaggerated just a little bit, but you get the drift, right? Um, and you know, Emily DeVito, uh, the first week of our Montgomery County service, you know, worked on several media stories where they were the same, same kinds of stories. You know, you may have seen some of these things where you know people now had connections that they didn't have before. Some of the kids who were going to football practice. And there's a there's a community center if you're familiar with Amsterdam and by the river at the bottom of the hill, and you know the, the football team practices uh, at the middle school, which is on top of the hill. You know, they were now using our service. A couple people were using it to get to work. So I mean, these are real stories. And what Paul was talking about earlier, uh, we didn't want to give you the whole thing. Uh, was that you need to be out there telling your story. And, you know, every month I, I produce this report, and it, it just it struck me that that's what we've been doing. You know, that's, I think, what separates us a little bit. We're constantly out telling our story, whether it be this story or the story of economic opportunity, you know, from the busway. Um, and, you know, I always come back to Dave Stacker and I talking you know, 10 years ago, we had to be more active. At the economic development table, we're, we're surely much more active today than we were ever before. I smile when Paul says 70%. You know, there are days, there are days this month we're at 90 or 95%. Uh, you know, trip cuts are a reality. Driver shortages are a reality. But we just thought you'd like to see that um, because yeah. we're a little over the top, but like 90% accurate. I mean, we made a difference in people's lives. We appreciate it. I know we have the age of it, Carmen, but I think that was more like 20 years ago we had that conversation. Yeah. So I was trying to fast track it up to you, know, you run out of time when you get to be a certain age. And, but it was, and you know, we 20 years ago, we were not at too many tables. Um, now I can tell you that I have trouble keeping track of the tables that we're at because we're, we're at so many. And it's not me, it's the people sitting around the table who you know, have really taken it to heart, but without the board vision, the board push, and the board adopting the new mission statement, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. So, you know, to see this kind of stuff, I mean, I'm, I'm at Albany. This is happening in Seattle. I'm getting a text from, from Stackrow. It's like, really? I mean, why us? Well, I think it's because not just the story. I think it's our reputation, too. I, I have a question. How do we hear of, of these stories? In oh, gosh. Time? I mean, I know individually we all hear them, but... So like, they, they've got systems here. <laughs> well, that particular story came from Facebook. After we launched service, a guy went on Facebook and basically said thank you to us because now he can see his daughters in Schenectady County, and it was very infrequent before, but now the service is running regularly, he can do it. So that was one example, but a lot of them come from social media, people getting on and basically saying, you know, thank you, or here's how you made life better. Um, and how often do we get these stories from actual drivers? Because a lot of times those relationships, especially with regular riders, become very personal. And in those stories, do, you, do we solicit the feedback from the drivers? And yeah, we share the stories. Probably not as much as, um, as we should be. But when dri drivers do get stories like this, they now know the right people to go to to tell. So when we hear them, Emily, myself, the rest of the team look for ways to to put it out there. And really, this ask from AFTA came. Um, they reached out and, and said, hey, we're looking for, for stories from riders. Do you have anything? So we plucked this one, but there were some others that we were looking at as well. This one just resonated because of the new service in, in Montgomery County. But we do get those from drivers. Yeah, that, it, something provoked my thoughts in that when you were giving the award for Tom Raiders. Um, and the way he knows the routes probably better than anyone, probably better than our planners, probably better than anyone in this room. And that he's been there for 20 odd years and driving those routes and has personal relationships with probably many of them. Yep. You know, we've changed a lot too. You know, when Emily came on board, you know, one of the tasks was to, you know, take what we have and, and make it better, you know, whether it be social media or outreach. You know, she coordinates um, our Blink program. You know, we talked a lot about Blink. It's, our own app, where now we're able to share news and share information with people. I think there's 400, more than that. Oh, yeah, more than 400. Uh, more than 400, yeah. In-house. Yeah. In, in, in yeah. People. Yeah. people. More people are on it than not. 
they shared a lot of feedback and stuff. About yeah, it's interesting stuff, right? People are still learning uh, about how to use it. Emily's constantly playing with it. She has a month. What's the Monday thing? Uh, Meet Team Monday, which is great because uh, you know you have Troy's and empty divisions, Albany. So just to see, go on there and see everyone, and find out you know favorite holiday, favorite food, where you go in the capital region, beyond. You work here. What are your other interests? So it's nice. Everyone, and everyone's very complimentary on it. Everyone loves it. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're, we're still. Do we get everything? No, uh -uh. no way. But I just like to see what. Yeah. I, I, you know, honestly, when they texted, I didn't know what in God's name he was talking about. Uh, I went to Jamie. She, at first, she didn't know because she kind of forgot because this thing was submitted months ago. Um, so, but the story itself is, as I said, it's, 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 it was well received. It, it really was. was. It was well, I was going to text it. Right, right. Eagle Eye was not. I had no idea was in front. So, anyway, so that was. That was it. You know, we talked about the 1.27 in September. It's continued in October. Um, you know, as Ross Farrell talked about a couple of months ago, the ridership composition's a little different. You know, we used to have these high spikes in morning and afternoon peaks. It's, that's flattened a little bit. So, it, it, you know, our universal access program that you know John Scherzer create, uh, manages um, is really responsible. You know, New Albany is the Albany Medical Center. So it's pushing us a little ahead. But you know, to make sure it's reality, you, you pinch yourself, you look at the finance reports, and customer revenue is keeping pace. So this is not, not a false number. It's, it's, it's a real number. Um, we've got a ways to go. Um, we're not going to sit there. But when I saw 50,000 for our daily count about five or six times in September, that was, that, that was the old norm. And we haven't seen that now in three years. So it's great to see it, and it's continuing. In, um, October. Uh, you got 30 people, I think one of the committee reports mentioned it, 30 people either just completing training or just starting training. I won't jinx anything, um, but retention this month, better. We'll say nothing more about that. Better. Um, COVID stuff keeps happening. You know, we, we still, October, September and October were not good months. Um, you know, a couple dozen in each month. You know, not alarming numbers, but enough so that those people are out for five days. Um, that's the new norm. You know, when you used to have the flu, you, no one was out for five days. You know, occasional day or two here or there. So, it's, but in, in addition to the issues that we have with recruiting and retention, we have lots of people out sick. And frankly, they're doing what we tell them to do. You know, if you're not feeling well, don't come to work. We've issued new guidance. Uh, we've revised our guidance a little bit. Uh, we're offering fourth booster, I guess it is, or fifth booster uh, to employees. We got flu shots coming up in the health center. So you know, we're doing everything we can to keep everybody healthy. Bikes keep uh, bikes are outstanding. Seventy thousand rides to date. Uh, we'll break the record again. We'll maybe get eighty thousand rides. We just put ten bikes, I think, twelve bikes. Oh, in Amsterdam for the rest of the season. Give it a shot. John Scherzer is going to pedal up the hill. <laughs> um, when does the season end? Uh, we get as far into November as we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Third week of November. Okay. But if the weather stays nice, we'll, we'll keep bikes out there. Yeah. Hey, hats off to everybody who went to Seattle. We had several board members, several staff people. Uh, we've got a bunch of people out over at NIFTA. Uh, uh, today and tomorrow, it's it's good that people want to be engaged in the learning process. You know, that's what this is all about. You know, it's no trip to the beach to get to Seattle um, and back. You know, it's a day in and a day out for you know a couple of days. So you know, thanks for doing that. Um, we we need to do more to learn about what the industry is doing and keep pace because you know our way is not the only way. You know, there are other ways to do business. And there's other people who are doing things better than us, and we've never been bashful about taking an idea and reconstituting it um, to make it work here. A um, couple of events that I wanted to just highlight for a minute. Um, you know, I don't know if this was Old Timers Day and I was feeling sort of, I don't know, old, uh, but it was great on the 29th of September to have Dave Stackrow join up with Dennis Fitzgerald, the former executive director. And a couple of his partners in crime, Wayne Pratt and Tony Esposito, to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the rail station. You know, those 
those guys built the station, they, they had the sort of the will, because I, I think without their will, I'm not sure it would have happened. There was just so many ups and downs and lefts and rights, uh, but they guided it through, and to see those guys come together and take a few pictures, they were, you know, had, they were exchanging a lot of jokes. And well, I don't know if they were all jokes, but uh, <laughs> it was good to see everybody, and, and I just wanted everybody to know that I appreciate what they did. Um, a couple weeks ago, we brought back our annual retiree lunch. We had tabled it for three years, and i, I got to tell you, the excitement in the room, the, I mean, we had more than 100 people. There's a, the family is like 300 retirees and growing. So we had about a third of the people there. We usually get a little more than that, but not a lot more. They were just so happy to be together. Uh, the agenda is very short and sweet. We had a one-minute video, and that was about it. They really don't want to hear from us. They want to just have the opportunity to come together. So thanks to Kelly and her team for organizing it. It was really well received. So I promised them we could do it again in the spring. But figure this out because we want them to see that the, the, they haven't seen all the, this building and all the changes that we've made. So to get them in here, there's some logistical issues, but we'll figure that out. Um, also, I wanted to recognize, I think six or seven board members are here, but we had Senator Kurt Gillibrand, Congressman Tonko, and um, uh, uh, President Biden's infrastructure coordinator, Mitch Landrow, who's uh, his former mayor of New Orleans here, uh, to announce the $25 million NOLO grant. But uh, again, I, I think, you know, hats off to everyone here at CDTA. You, you, you get selected for that stuff because you're good. You do, you're doing good things. And for, for the senator to bring, you know, uh, Mitch, Mitch along, he, he said, call me Mitch. Um, and, you know, if you do know anything about the city of New Orleans, this is a you know, his dad was mayor, um, one of nine kids, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it was nice to be uh, recognized. And then lastly, um, last Friday, we held our annual uh, pink bus pull. You know, we do this every year with the American Cancer Society. The whole parking lot was full of people. I mean, completely full of, I don't know how many hundred people were here. We had 25 teams from everywhere and anywhere. Uh, pulling buses, you know, for a couple of hours. Um, team from the Albany Fire Department won, but we had a couple teams that were really competitive. The county executive team, you know, he had Dan Lynch as one of the anchors. Um, <laughs> was, is he all right? <laughs> yeah, the county executive had a little spill you know, uh, on our uh, property. Yeah, the insurance is going to come in handy <laughs> when he sues us. Is this meeting recorded? <laughs> 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 but we, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun event, and we had, you know, tons of CDK people volunteering. We had you know, the popcorn machine going, and you know, drinks, and um, but to talk about a high energy event where we kind of get the word out. And sponsors were, I mean, Tony Med was here. Uh, oh, um, Gen Thirteen was here. No, this. Um, Gen Thirteen had their own FBI. team. FBI. Yeah, the FBI had a team. Oh, Best I could tell, they didn't have guns. Connected to school district. district. One of our new partners had a team. Oh, you know, wow. We doubled the price. We went from 100 to 200 to, when we had more teams. So our only scare here is that we may be outgrowing the facility. We may not have So, you know, we have to take the show on the road. But um, hats off to everybody. Pat was here. Pat, I tried to get Pat to form a board member. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you can get Dan Lynch to you know, do two weeks. <laughs> Sheriff and, and um, Albany Police Department. I, I think they train all year long. 
DGS, all my DGS. They got second. And they really did train all year. How many DGS have a team? Yeah. Well, they have two teams. I came in second. They said it was first. Yeah, so I think they have a team. We didn't train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lot of fun, you know, and, and I, 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 I ran Dan's boss, but he, uh, he started a little um, social media thing, you know, by challenging some people in the morning, and that spread, and, you know, the power of social media. It, it, it was a lot of fun. That concludes my report. All right. And then I. Great. Mm -hmm. Not fun. Let's talk about it, sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until Collins gets up. Well, I missed that meeting. <laughs> now, poor Denise missed the meeting, but then Jamie said, I think she really ought to report. I think you knew what you were doing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Carr. Um, next item board member comments. Just anything for the credit of the order here? Uh, otherwise, we have an executive session on the agenda to discuss the personnel matter. That'll take about five or ten minutes, so we need to clear the room. I think we need Kelly here and Amanda. Chris. We Chris. Need a motion. No, you're in. Uh, that's it. We need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 So, so we're in executive session. I'll say. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 